it's one of the biggest festivals we're super excited about outside land so if you're already thinking about getting those blankets and coats when you head out there outside land at golden gate park is back and once again we'll be highlighting many of the new attractions and contestants that we featured in the festival so today we're going to talk about some of the amazing food that is going to be happening at outside land so joining me right now in studio are outside lands food curator tanya kohler thanks for being here and chef francis ang of your restaurant abaca Awesome. Okay, this looks gorgeous. I'm so excited to sample this. But first, we got to talk a little bit about what it took to sort of create and decide what food you're going to highlight, Tanya, for the festival. I think it really starts with kind of looking at the Bay Area food scene, um, seeing what hot new restaurants are out there, what cool pop-ups are out there, and then also looking at some of the San Francisco legacy businesses that have been around for many decades and, you know, that our Bay Area residents go to as a sense of comfort. So I really try to reflect, uh, you know, what's going on in the Bay Area culinary scene when I curate the food lineup for Outside Lands. That doesn't sound like an easy task because <laughs> we are so spoiled here. I mean, we've got great chefs. Francis, this food looks amazing. Thank you. Some of the stuff you're high. So will, is this some of the stuff that you will actually have out there at Outside Lands? Like this is from your restaurant inspired by you? This is basically our full menu for Outside Lands. Wow. And a lot of these are actually on our regular menu at the restaurant as well. Okay, so if we can't make it to the show, you can always go to the restaurant and check this out. Tell me a little bit about some of these dishes. The fact that you have this, I don't know if this is sweet or savory or both, but the strawberries with the sauce, it looks amazing. Mm. I can't wait to dive in and dig into that one. So that is a... Uh, we, we call it uh, in the Philippines, carioca. It's basically gluten-free. It's a mochi donut with coconut caramel, passion fruit, strawberries. Um, it's delicious. Chewy, crispy, sweet, sour, everything. You got a everything. little bit of everything with that. You know, speaking of that, you know, just, we're so rich in culture here in the Bay Area, too. Is that something you think about as well when you pick sort of the restaurants that you highlight here at, for Outside Lands? Yeah, absolutely. I think that's one of the main things that I focus on when I select the new restaurants that are going to join Outside Lands. I try to look at what holes we have in the menu diversity because we really want to reflect all of the different ethnic cuisines that are found at Outside Lands. So, for example, this year I brought in a contemporary Colombian restaurant called Parche mm -hmm. because we I realized we haven't had Colombian and food at the uh, festival in a couple of years. So it's really important for me to um, allow people to experience all these different cultural cuisines when they come to Outside Lands. And it's not just food. I see there's drinks and cocktails too. And also is there, so there's multiple days for Outside Lands. Is this, is it different restaurants every day? Or does this, like, for example, are you going to be out there for all three days, three or two days? Three days. Three, yep. days. three days. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So we have 96 restaurants and they're all there for all three days. So even if you have a single day ticket, you can still get the same restaurants that everyone else gets. 96. I would be trying a different restaurant every single day. <laughs> I would definitely be sampling that. Okay. Tell me a little bit more about this. And I think everyone's, look at this, look at this crowd on the side here waiting to come in to try some of this food. Come on, you guys. Let's test this out. Tell me some awesome. more about these dishes. All right. So there's a classic uh, Lola's Lumpia, we call it. So basically grandma's recipe. You got an apple ketchup on top. Can I try this? Absolutely. Ooh. Apple ketchup? Yes. Apple I love that this is inspired by a grandma. That's awesome. We're, we're in California, so we use a lot of oh fruits gosh. and vegetables from the farmer's market. Um, mm -hmm. Over there is sea seed fried rice with a poached wow. egg, a little bit of chicharron. Amazing. Ooh. Oh my God. This is, Pickle I'm not onion. kidding. Really? I'm not kidding. I'm not just yeah. saying this for TV. This is so good. <laughs> you, I'm not, try that. Thank That's you. unbelievable. Yeah. Where's your restaurant yeah. at? It's, yeah, like, right? um, it's like the perfect spot. It's very close to North Beach, very yeah. close to Fisherman's Wharf and um, Gary Daly Square. So it's basically Beach and Jones. I could eat this all day. Restaurant <laughs> Abaca. It's inside the Kimpton Alton Hotel. So, okay. so we're inside a hotel. Um, this is our uh, pancit molo. So it's basically homemade dumplings with uh, pork broth. Again, fresh veggies because we're in California. This is beautiful. And the presentation is so gorgeous. It must take a lot of work to like move this and bring this on the road when you're doing the festival. No, we're good. <laughs> She's so, He's like, I got this. Like, I got this. <laughs> she, no so we've been doing this for four years, four years and, yeah. and you know, every year we learn a lot. So now we're like, I'm already like, my headspace is ready. We already got the full notes on how we're going to do this. And, mm -hmm. you know, and then we're, we're actually working with, we're talking to other chefs and, you know, like giving them our advice on how to do it. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. good. If this is what we're getting there, this kind of food, <laughs> delicious. All right, right. Thank you, Tanya and Francis, for joining us. We're going to enjoy this. We'll be right this back.